Hi everyone, I'm Kevin Horn and you are watching Equipping the Saints and today we have another exciting broadcast and uh, last week we were talking about redigging wells and uh, tapping into uh, that anointing that's available to restore us. Uh, there's so many things, so many lost heritages that are there just waiting for uh, for us to discover and uh, today the Lord's put it on my heart to dig a little deeper and uh, I'm telling you I have some revelation here that I believe is going to bless you and, and stir you and, and hopefully cause you to get so thirsty that you're going to dig and dig until you have the breakthrough and that's it that's the key to dig and not to give up on any of the promises of God, there's thousands of them there. There's, there's more than enough. It, it, there, God has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And through his promises, we can be partakers of his divine nature. That's what it says in scripture. And uh, you know what? I've learned the key is to get thirsty, to get hungry. And that's what our Lord said. You know, blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be field and uh, and that is just a, a key you know if you're not real hungry you're not going to see a lot of these kingdom realities and uh, the truth is that the word is the same yesterday today and forever and uh, and those things that we see people walking in the things that Jesus paid the price on the cross for us to to live in you know what they belong to us and we can have them and but we got to contend for them and just believe the Holy Spirit is here to lead you, to guide you, uh, and establish you in the truth, and, and bring you into the place where you're more concerned about what's going on in heaven than what's going on in the earth, where you're more influenced by the kingdom than the problem. And uh, that, when you start stepping into that realm, oh man, it changes everything. And so today I'm going to dig a little deeper and I want to just kind of go back and, and revisit um, the account in Isaac's day uh, where he was, um, uh, you know, he was redigging the, the wells of his father. But we want to talk about a few principles that I didn't really have time to get into uh, last week. And so if you're following along with me today, you know, join me in Genesis 26. And, uh, and let's just take a look at what it says here. It says in verse 1, there was a famine in the land. And besides the first famine that was in the days of Abraham, and Isaac went unto uh, Abimelech, king of the Philistines, unto Gerar. Oh, man. So um, there was a famine in that generation. Please hear me. We might be living in some pretty good times still here in this country, but but you know what? This is, this is a big deal. Um, uh, here in California, there's drought, and in other countries, you know, there's famine. And, uh, and so, you know what, the world, there might be a famine that comes in our life. Maybe somebody's watching today is going through a famine, maybe a spiritual famine. And it goes on to say here, verse 2, The Lord appeared unto him and said, Go not down into Egypt. And so apparently he wanted to go into Egypt. But the Lord says, dwell in the land which I shall tell thee of. Sojourn in this land, and I will be with thee, I will bless thee. For unto thee and unto thy seed will I give all these countries, and I will perform the oath which I swear unto Abraham thy father. Oh man, please hear that. And uh, that is a key right there. Not to go and to do things our way, uh, what, which appears to maybe be the easy way, but the Lord has a way for you, and that's where you want to be. That's where you want to sow. That's where you want to, uh, to live and where God is, and, and that favor of the Lord will make a way even if there is no way in the world. Please hear that. And it goes on to say, And I will make thy seed to multiply as the stars of heaven, and I will give unto thy seed all these countries, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because Abraham obeyed my voice, kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. Wow. And so please hear that. That, that applies to you and me as believers. And if you're not a believer, 
you can tap into this. You can receive Jesus as your Lord. And, and if you're a believer and you're not experiencing some of these realities here, this blessing, this favor, please hear me. You know what? It's time to get hungry. It's time to get thirsty. Because these words, this is the word of God, in spite of what we may not see happening, even in churches, even in, in, in our lives, the word of God is a greater reality. And if we'll just go after it, the Holy Spirit has been sent to lead us and guide us into all truth. And that's just the truth. It really is. And it's just amazing that how Abraham, he paid that price and he was obedient unto the Lord. And because of his obedience, God made a promise that he's obliged himself to. I mean, even unto all of us throughout this age, that blessing, that same blessings available to us, the church, those that belong to Abraham, they are they are those that belong, it says in, in Galatians 3.29, are Abraham's seed. Those that belong to Christ are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And so we are blessed with faithful Abraham. It says in Galatians chapter 3, when we live by faith. Oh man. And so see yourself as a seed. See your life as a seed. And, uh, and so please hear this. And and so it goes on to say, if you go down to verse 12 here, that Isaac, he sowed in that land. And please hear me, there was a famine in the land. But he sowed where God told him to sow. And received in the same year a hundredfold, and the Lord blessed him. And the man waxed great and went forward and grew until he became very great. For he had possessions of flocks and of herds and of a great store of servants, and it says the Philistines envied him. And, uh, and that, is, um, that is just a profound uh, truth that can, can happen in your life. I see it happening in people's lives in our church group. People are starting to tap into this. They're getting hungry. They're digging. They're, they're getting into the, some of these waters. And you know what? Your life is like a seed. When you start tapping into that water, it changes everything. And, uh, and the key is to sow where God wants you to sow. And, uh, and a lot of people don't want to go that way because it looks hard. It looks like there's no way. But when God's with you, and, uh, and when, you're, when you're following after that, that, the Holy Spirit and stepping into your covenant and allowing those gifts to grow, it changes everything. I remember <clears throat> when I was... Um, little younger, not too many years ago. This has been about, um, I guess, about 14 years now since this started. The Lord really started dealing with me. I was working for an architectural firm, and uh, it was about four, uh, seven years, over seven years I was working for this firm, and it was really good time, and uh, uh, the business, uh, the economy was good. We were working for colleges and schools, a professional firm, I was very established and very comfortable, doing well in my position, and then the Lord, um, the Lord started dealing with me about quitting my job and, and going into business for myself. And, and it just so happened around that time, there was a famine that came into the the building industry, a great recession. Uh, I'm telling you what, it, it was it was pretty dry, and the housing industry was already flat. And the, and, and the commercial uh, industry was filling it. And, um, and the Lord says, Kevin, I want you to quit your job. And I want you to go into this place, up into this new area I had just moved to, where I didn't know anybody, and start your own business. And I'll be there, and I'll bless you. And you know what? That was a hard thing to do. And... Uh, but the Lord has a, a way of, of, of guiding you. And I had to step through uh, the, that, that mindset, that impossibility, and just trust the Lord. And when I stepped through that door, it was kind of like what's going on here. The Lord was teaching me uh, a, a very powerful principle that, that I hope that we all get stirred up and step into of the kingdom. Um, that when you are were living by faith, when you're walking in covenant, when you've been born again, uh, you become like a tree. You become uh, like a tree. The, the book of, of Psalms chapter 1 
reveals that you're like a tree that can be planted by rivers of water. And you can draw into those, witter, those waters and, and you can live from that realm instead. And so what happened? I, I tapped into that realm and then jobs just started coming. Uh, it was miraculous. It was an open heaven. I really started learning uh, and really started being impacted by by the covenant that we have with the Lord that you can live by faith. And for seven years, I had an abundance of jobs until the Lord says, okay, I'm closing that door. Now I want you to go into full-time ministry. And and that was about seven years ago. And, and he gave me another vision. But but you got to sow uh, where the Lord wants you to sow. You got to give your time, your talent, your resources uh, over to the leading of the Lord into the kingdom, so into the kingdom, and things just happen that cannot happen any other way. And if you really want to see those waters uh, that uh, come on uh, into contact with your life, and uh, I'm telling you, the key is 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 uh, is giving, and uh, that's what I've learned. It says this in in the book of uh, Second Corinthians. Let me just. Um, give you a couple of verses here just to encourage people and I'm not talking about money here today I'm talking about our covenant and uh, turn with me to 2nd Corinthians 9 uh, verse 6 I believe and we'll take a look at some powerful truths here and so verse 6 says but this I say he which sows sparingly shall also reap sparingly and but he that sows bountifully shall also reap bountifully and uh, and so what I'm talking about here is tapping into these waters learning how to draw from these waters where your leaf will not wither where you'll where you'll prosper in every season whatever you do will prosper even when you make mistakes God's grace will turn it around for your good and uh, and go look at Psalms 1 uh, you'll see that in there and, but it goes on to say here, Every man according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity. And so we don't have to worry about giving to receive even, uh, because Jesus says, Just seek first the kingdom and his righteousness, and your needs will be met. That's in, that's in, uh, in the scripture there. And it goes on to say here, God loves a cheerful giver. And he is able to make all grace, divine ability, abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency may abound to every good work. And is this true? Could this happen? You know what? The only way you're going to find out is to step into it and to trust the Lord. Uh, Luke 6.38, our Lord says, Give and it shall be given. Good measure, pressed down shaken together and running over there's something that will come out of your life and run over and spill out into other places as well and that's what the lord wants he wants that reality or that greater reality of christ in you to so fill you that it spills out and begins to flood the earth he wants this whole earth to be filled with the knowledge of his glory as the waters cover the sea and we have to learn how to sow into those areas however hard it may be no matter how long it may take just be obedient to the Lord and uh, and and the Holy Spirit the anointing can come in and begin to break through those barriers through those hard pans through those layers those stratas and the waters can start flowing in your life and through your life and when you start to have the understanding uh, the revelation uh, uh, <laughs> It changes everything. And please hear me. You are like a seed. And when you come into contact with those waters through sacrifice again, and uh, through sacrifice that life comes forth, and you start stepping into it, a light will shine, and you'll see the process of seed time and harvest operate in your life. And you'll start to grow and live and do things, not as a man in the world, but as a son of God. And again, it's one thing to be born again. It's another thing to live as a son of God. And this is what the Lord wants to stir in our hearts. And, and so many people, please hear me, don't be offended by what I'm saying. So many people are afraid to cross that barrier, to step 
out of their ability and trust in the Lord. But I'm telling you, once you start to taste and see that the Lord is good, that there really is more, it'll produce a hunger and a thirst where you won't stop for anything. You're going to have the, what God is leading you into, and you're going to contend for it, and the breakthrough shall come. And so many people have been closed up. Uh, I mean, please hear me. The, the world has a way of just hardening you, just being, you know, living in the world you know, you're going to have disappointments and all kinds of things can happen that can close you up, harden you. And, and the enemy has a way of, of, of putting a gate on you so that these waters can't flow up. And it's through deception, it's through lies, it's through us believing not the truth, but maybe, maybe even a, a partial truth, but still that will keep you closed. You have to go after this word and, and actually start living giving your life over to the leading of the Spirit, and you'll see the, the reality of the victory of what Jesus did for you on the cross start to, to, to uh, shine and, and, and move uh, in your life. It, it's awesome. I remember when, again, when I, when I tapped into that realm where my jobs, I mean, I had like 40-some jobs in six months. The next year I had over 80 architectural jobs. The year after that, over 80 or 90 jobs, and it's for seven years, I had just super abundance. And uh, it was amazing. And then the Lord, you know, He took me into full-time ministry, and He was preparing me. There, there, you know, the Lord has a plan for all of us, and he's, He starts you off right where you are. And uh, I did just, just, just did not step into this position here to be on television or to be a pastor, to have multiple churches, but you have to be faithful in those little things, and, and it, He will bring you into a place where there's multiplication of grace and ability so that He can establish His kingdom. I mean, the kingdom of God is to be ever increasing in our life and through our life, and, and that's the plan of God. But we have to just be willing to believe Him and follow the Spirit no matter what no matter what anybody says, we have to be willing to let the love of God touch people, save people, even if people get uncomfortable around us to be that witness, to be that light, or to believe them for the miracle, the breakthrough, so you could advance a, uh, the kingdom. Whatever it is God's calling you to do, if you follow the Lord, you, will, you, you shall see an increase. You shall see the good measure shaken together and running over start flowing through your life. Oh man, hope I'm encouraging people today. And that's what I do. And that's how we have gotten to this place where we are here today. We just give. Uh, all I can do is just freely uh, give what I have freely received from the Lord. And it's all by grace. And that's what the Lord wants to lead the whole church into, where we're not having to do anything but just give. We're not to know anybody Please hear this. We're not to owe anybody anything but to love them. And that's where the Lord is leading all of us. And we're all work in progress, but that's, that's the idea. Praise the Lord. And so let's just continue to build on this a little bit. And I hope I'm stirring people. And so uh, what was happening here is he was, he was prospering. He was sowing into that blessing, that favor of Abraham and the Philistines were envying him. Please hear me and, and, uh, and, and, and please hear this too. You know, we're not after, what I'm suggesting to you today is not to, to become lovers of money. No, no, that's the root of evil. But, but God wants you to be blessed. This is, this is part of your covenant in the new covenant, that blessing, that favor of Abraham. And it actually is what empowers you to be who you are and, and, to, and to advance the kingdom, fill the earth with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. I mean, it's, it is just wonderful. And he was sowing in to that favor that he had seen in his father's life. And, and it was through times of famine even. And, and the Philistines got, got jealous and, uh, oh man, they got so upset that they started, uh, you know, closing up those wells. And if you keep reading here, the king of the Philistines says, get away from us. You are more mighty than we. They were even afraid of him. And, and so he went off into another area and he pitched his tent 
and he started redigging wells. He, he dug out, um, if you read in here, three wells that um, his father Abraham had dug, and he got those waters flowing, and uh, uh, then he reinstated their original names, and then he dug three new ones, and the king, uh, you know, came back to him after a period of time, and, and they decided they wanted to get close to him, that, that they seen this tremendous favor, this blessing on Isaac. They wanted to make covenant with him because they knew that truly he was a man that was blessed of the Lord. Oh, please hear that. And it says in Scripture that same day that he had dug another well and they had found water, and it was called the well, they called it Sheba, which was the well of the seven. And please hear that. And, and so what they were, uh, <laughs> what that word Sheba means, the well of the seven, is pointing to a greater reality, a kingdom reality that Jesus ministered out of, the fullness of the Holy Spirit, the seven spirits of the Lord. And uh, I'm telling you what, these waters are real, and once you start to tap in, into these waters and the waters start flowing through your life it produces uh, open heavens on you you can become like a well that's springing forth uh, the revelation that Jesus paid the price for you to live in you can you can tap into those as well those 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 anointings that you see people operating in the gifts of the spirit well guess what they're they're for all of us and and God never intended for any of these these uh, these mantles, these anointings from past generations to stop. And what happens is there's just some modern day Philistines, traditions, if you will, that have plugged up the wells. But you know what? If you want to see what I'm talking about, you got to get hungry. We should honor our fathers, our spiritual fathers, people that have paid prices in the past and, and dig into these. And uh, I mean, I... I really, uh, I, I really admire Smith Wigglesworth in his day. He got so hungry. He was, a, he was a man who got hungry for the Word, and the Lord brought him into such a place where there was manifest uh, miracles. Limbs would grow out. Eyes were healed. People were raised from the dead even. These things are for all of us. We are created for these. These same realities can flow through your life if you're just willing to dig. And, uh, and that is the key. I hope that this is blessing you today. Um, let me just see. I think I'm going to close with just sharing a little vision that I had. And, um, and then next week I'm going to really build on this. And I mean, I'm telling you, there is revelation that God, I believe, is releasing from His breath. Uh, and I think I'm speaking prophetically right now that uh, will, will, will cause rest restoration and renewal and the Lord wants us to to know that he doesn't want us to give up on those people that we know that are far away from the Lord but he wants us to to go after them he wants us to know that there is a fresh anointing available uh, for people to dig into to to learn how to draw from the kingdom and I'm gonna build on that this next week I hope that you can uh, tune in next week the same time and hear that but it was about a year ago that I had this, this dream, and I believe it was of the Lord. And please hear me, this dream was, was powerful. I was in my house, and I was standing outside and looking, and I could see water starting to rise up all around me. On the other side of the fence, it was uh, getting so high that it was bulging over the fence. And then the next thing I knew, it, it, just, it just pulled me and my wife into these waters. And everywhere we looked, it was just water. It was like an ocean, a sea. And I could see off in the distance other people, the waters were rising up, and they were jumping into the river. And they were jumping into the waters. And that's what time it is. It's time to jump into, into the revelation of what God wants you to do and to give your life over to it and let that revelation produce a, a flood in your life to begin to fill this earth with the knowledge of His glory. And I'm telling you what, what I'm talking about, yeah, these are prophetic, these are spiritual revelations you have to dig into, but they are real, and they are greater than your circumstances. And when you start to tap in to the living revelation, the knowledge of His glory, 
it transforms you, and it makes a way for that reality of the Word to be made manifest in the here and the now of your existence, and, and Jesus shows up at the point of your need. And uh, that's awesome. That's about all the time I have today to talk on this issue, but I want to give people an opportunity to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Maybe uh, you're watching, maybe you've gone, gotten away from the Lord. Well, right now is a good time. Just say, Lord, I want to come back. I repent of my sins. Maybe you don't know Jesus. Just the way into the kingdom is repent and turn from your past, turn from your problems, turn to the Lord and start following Him and He'll help you through all your problems. And so just say, Lord, I repent. I, I, I repent of all my sins and I forgive people that have done me wrong and I'm sorry for the way I've treated people. And I ask you to come into my life. I believe in my heart that you died on the cross. You rose from the dead on the third day according to the scriptures. Come into my life and be my Lord and be my Savior and I'll follow you. And if you meant that from your heart, if you believe that from your heart, I'm telling you, well, you're going to see Jesus show up and everything is going to start to change and become new. And it's exciting. And if you made that commitment, let me know. I would love to know about it. I would love to hear about it. Uh, you know, email me, write me, request. Uh, uh, I have a free resource, uh, a new believer's handout. I would love to send you. And maybe you're watching today and and you were stirred by this broadcast and you might want to hear it again or maybe you know somebody who might want to hear it well just call the number on the screen i would love to send it to you again it's called digging deeper and uh, and again the lord has been building upon revelation upon revelation through the these uh, broadcasts here and if you go and look on our website you'll see other preceding broadcasts that just kind of build and lead into this one and and i believe next week we're going to build and, and it's going to be awesome. We're going to talk about drawing forth from the kingdom and, uh, and how you can do that. And I believe it will bless you. Thank you for joining me today. Stay tuned for some announcements. And uh, may the Lord richly bless you.